Hey guys, it is you know, and um, got a little bit of a uh, more technical tutorial today on uh, sampling rate and bit depth. Um, hopefully, doesn't bore you. I think it's actually uh, rather fascinating um, how you can sort of manipulate the quality of your sounds. But um, hopefully, in the next lesson or two, we're going to get into some more creative. Uh, I guess more fun type of stuff um, but yeah as always I'd appreciate if you could mm, check out my other songs I'll leave the link in the description for my other channel um, I'll also leave a link in the description um, for my mastering service um, yep and um, thanks to Portero Portero for letting me use this master um, this is a song bitch be lucky um, that I mastered for him. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all that I need to do, all the introduction. Um, okay, so samples. Um, samples are the most fundamental uh, uh, makeup of a digital signal. So if you just scroll in on this digital signal here, you see the sound waves, you keep going, you keep going, you keep going, and you're going to see these little bubbles here, um, if you're using Edison at least, Edison, the uh, plugin within FL Studio, um, and you'll occasionally see two of them next to each other, that's simply because it's a uh, stereophile. Um, the space between the uh, samples, that's what these little bubbles are called, uh, is determined by the sample rate. So the larger space uh, means it is a uh, lower sampling rate and then if there's a smaller space that means that there's a higher sampling rate because there's a sample every you know so and so seconds and it's uh, higher or there's more samples per second than there is with the uh, lower sample rate. And um, basically, the higher the sampling rate, uh, it's the higher the resolution of the the uh, song. It just sounds uh, a little bit more crisp. Um, it's kind of subjective. Like 48 kilohertz versus 44.1 kilohertz is a little bit marginal. You can barely tell, if at all, that there's any difference. But, you know, it's good to uh, oversample sometimes. When you hear oversampling, all that means is that the processing within um, a plugin is uh, is done at a higher sampling rate than uh, be before. So, for instance, um, or than what's uh, currently being used in the session. So, if you got input going into the exciter here, and we got oversampling clicked, um, say we got 44.1 going in here, the processing um, basically um, first, they take the 44.1 kilohertz and they sample it to, um, I believe it's 96 kilohertz um, internally, Ozone does. They add the harmonics, afterwards they return the sample to 44.1 and then they play it through, um, you know, it's the output. Um, that's what the clicking the oversampling does. And you can oversample at different rates. Uh, for instance, you can oversample however many times. So one time you're not oversampling, two times you're doubling the sample rate, and so on and so forth. So that's that. Um, so you can't simply in FL Studio just take something that's at 44 or sorry, 48 hertz. 48 kilohertz and drop it into a song that's or a session that's 44.1 because it'll sound rushed and pitched up um, and just not good see and I'm at 44.1 it's like all of a sudden it's at like 115 beats per minute when it's really at 108 Well, maybe not that fast, but anyways, yeah, it does speed it up a little bit if you're not uh, not adjusted. You don't convert the sample rate. 
Um, but anyways, um, and I'll show you how to do that. You can go into Edison here. Um, edit properties, have resample on, and set. And you want to go from whatever sample rate you're currently at. If you want to go to 44.1, hit accept. And now it's going to resample. And watch the waves right here. They're going to slightly change a little bit. It's because they are physically being reconstructed. Okay. Um, and it doesn't sound... <sighs> doesn't sound too different because uh, it's a very marginal difference um, oh something else I wanted to show you um, here's a neat, uh, neat little website I got here um, it compares sampling rates and how they deal with aliasing you'll see that the red here is uh, aliasing here's Ableton Live, Ableton Live 7 and you can just go through a bunch of different DAWs a bunch of different um, um, converters Ooh. and uh, basically compare them uh, visually you can do different uh, tests on it um, and I found that any time is not the greatest one. Actually, believe it or not, um, FL Studio has a really good um, sample rate converter. So here's FL Studio 7 with Edison, 8, 10. Um, there's 6 point Hermite, which, let's be honest, I kind of think it sucks. <laughs> I like um, the 512 point sync myself. Um, <clears throat> so they're not too bad um, even compared to Ableton Live um, yeah uh, what I recommend myself is RateBrain RateBrain is free um, the only thing that the free version does that the paid for version uh, doesn't is it flips the phase which you can you know flip again back to normal yourself very easily especially in FL Studio Here's the uh, linear phase paid for version. And I uh, got Reaper. Here's the minimum phase uh, paid for version as well. So, yeah, um, definitely recommend Rate Brain. Here it is. Very easy. Um, what else? Oh, um, another really quality one is Saracone by Weiss and. Uh, you could see a little bit of alias up in here, but um, by far it is the cleanest out of every other sample rate converter. Aside from the aliasing up here, everything's just pristine. Um, so yeah, cool stuff. Um, and then, I, like I said, I was going to tell you about bit depth. Um, Bit depth is measured in 8 bits, 16 bits, 32 bits, 46 bit, 48 bit, 48 bits. Um, hell, it could be 46 if they want. Um, but basically, I believe each bit, correct me if I'm wrong, I'll probably have a little annotation correcting myself. Uh, you can even check Google. Um, I believe each bit is approximately minus 6 dB it adds minus 6 dB to the range so um, what I mean by that is um, something with 8 bits can reproduce pretty much everything at the top of the volume here that uh, 16 bits can but when it gets down to the lower parts um, it can't it's, uh, it doesn't have the bit to bit size to do that or the bit depth to do it um, and thus it is not as good as 16 bits. The standard format for a CD is um, 16 bits at um, 400 and or sorry 44,100 Hertz or 44.1 kilohertz. So we already converted this uh, pre-master here to 44.1 kilohertz and it's at 32 bits right now. Um, if I wanted to convert it to um, 
or sorry, if I wanted to con yeah, convert it to 16 bits, I could simply um, save uh, you know the file. So basically export it as a WAV file. Um, instead of 32 bit, which it's in right now, select 16 bits. Um, basically when it um, when it exports from 32 to 16 bits, it takes out the bottom uh, 16 bits and it just completely throws it away. Um, and you're left with a bit of what's called quantization distortion, which is why you want to have dithering checked. And uh, without getting too complicated, dithering uh, eliminates most of the quantization distortions, which you get with uh, digital, um, uh, when you get with truncating uh, an audio signal. Um, so yeah, you want to have this checked. There's different types of dither out there. There's a really sweet one by Ozone, again, love Ozone, um, called uh, Mbit Plus. Um, really sweet. That's probably my favorite. There's also some by Waves, which also work really, really well. Um, but yeah, there's plenty of dithers out there. There's Freewares ones out there. Um, like I said, if you're using FL Studio, you already have one. Um, so yeah, that's that's how you do that. Um, so yeah, just uh, convert down from 48 if uh, you're working at 48. Um, export and dither. That's how you go down from uh, 48 kilohertz and 32 bits to 44.1 kilohertz and uh, 16 bits. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, you can do a lot of cool stuff with Edison. A lot of audio editing, sampling good stuff. Um, it's really a sweet tool for really getting your hands dirty with editing even to the sample level. Uh, let's see here like usually on this these uh, things right here um, sorry in the sequencer over here or sorry the playlist Ugh, it's too late for me. In the playlist uh, you can select, uh, you know, what kind of dimensions you want to, uh, you know, lay down or uh, snap to when you're scrolling through here. But when you're in Edison, you can even go down to um, samples or zero crossing, and I love this. Zero crossing is the best. Um, if you start out by if you start out um, a, so a signal um, where the sample isn't at zero, for instance, you see this, um, these samples are not at zero, um, it sounds like kind of a click and it doesn't sound good at all. Very digital, is, nah, digital is not a good word. It doesn't sound good, just trust me. Um, there's like a spike in volume and it doesn't sound very good at all. Um, what snap to zero crossing does is it ensures that wherever you're uh, editing from is where the sound is at zero essentially which is so awesome seriously freaking awesome um, yeah and also um, I just remembered a quick differentiation between what um, fixed point and floating point are. I'm going to do that again. Um, okay, you'll see here that it's got 32 bit floating, 24 bit uh, integer, which is fixed, um, and also 16, which is also fixed. Um, what floating bit means is if you export um, this song, and it's clipping up here, no matter how high you go, um, the information isn't lost. And this is kind of kind of confusing in a way, but um, think of it like this. Um, on an analog desk, or even when you're working with 16-bit or 24-bit when it's a fixed point, um, when you're, you know, listening to the song, and it you know, it was just completely clipped off. Um, 
the top of the sound signal is, like I said, clipped off. And that's what you're left with. Um, well, with 32-bit floating, this is not really the case. Um, because it's digital, we're working within a, a digital environment, there's actually technically infinite, infinite headroom. So if you, um, you know, were clipping a ton, and you exported it and sent it to your friend, and then he's like, whoa, this is shit, and then he all of a sudden um, turns the gain down on that signal, it will no longer sound clipped. It'll be what the signal sounded like before you, um, before you clipped it. With 24-bit, uh, you can turn the gain, uh, if you export it, you can turn the gain up or down on it, but it's still always going to be clipped. It's just the gain will be higher or lower um, when you play it back, but it will always be clipped. Um, and I hope I made sense there, but the 32-bit floating is very, very useful. I mean, you still have to gain stage right, but um, it's extremely uh, it's nice. Um, takes a little bit of the the pressure off of having to have everything absolutely not clip at all when you're doing the mix um, so yeah that's a one reason to do 32-bit floating um, I think that's about it for now um, if you want to change sample rates you can do that right in here and um, yeah all right. Hmm. And um, like always, like I said before, if you check out my songs. I'd really appreciate it. Like it. Um, link in the description. Uh, my mastering service that also will be in the description. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.